of my own direction No one can pull me out I force them to run from the others I'm running away now Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Major Love Wrestling right here on the Love Wrestling Channel. I am Bobby Money Munson. I am joined with my colleague, the man with the angelic voice. He is Papa Spokes and we had a very, very special guest joining us here today. He is MLW's very own Akira Kwan. Thank you for joining us right here on Major Love Wrestling tonight. Glad to be here, man. Thank you guys for having me. You're very welcome. We're going to get right down to this interview right away, but just a couple of uh, house cleaning type things. Our sponsors, we got to give them a shout out. RK Athletics, one on Twitter. Rich King, he can help you get in the best shape of your life from diet plans to fitness plans. This is the man you want to reach out to. Reach out to Rich King at RK Athletics, one. And again, if you want to feel your finest, you want to head on over to manscaped.com and use the promo code Love Wrestling for 20% off your order and free worldwide shipping. So, yes, we are here being joined by someone who has caught our very attention with his work over in MLW, one of the great members of Contra. It is Akira Kwan. Uh, we have been singing your praises because we really enjoy your work, and last week made a lasting impact on us. Not only did we finally get to see a nice one-on-one -on -one matchup with you and Ken Broadway, but afterwards, that promo that you cut, man, that one really hit hard. The promo you cut on Jacob Fatu, calling him out, having the the... the Balls to step up to that guy. I mean, he seems like he is a fierce competitor, and you really stuck it to him. Really had it, had his uh, you you really had his number that night, and it was great to see. Um, how did that feel? What was that experience like for you last week on the episode of Fusion? Oh, uh, you know, what I mean, like every time they give me the keys, man, I'm 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 stepping on the gas like real quick because I know I got to seal every moment I have, you know. Um. But for me, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of my thing, right? I'm calling out everybody in the way that, like, I'm a middleweight. I'm 175 pounds, but I haven't wrestled one person my size since I stepped foot in there. I just never, never. So, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I always say, you know, I'm 5'8", I'm, I'm but I, flip, I fight like I'm 6'9", because there's no bench press. There's no genetics that can just build heart. That's me. I have that. I'll fight anybody. I'm not scared of anybody. But a lot of no. people just, you know, they talk it. You know what I mean? It's cool. It's cool when it sounds like they're reading it. But when you when you really live by that, you can just talk. So, yeah. so fighting guys uh, that are bigger than you and everything like that has that been a personal choice up to this point, or is there that desire to eventually get in with the guys in the middleweight division? I mean, I mean that's that. I mean, I obviously want that title, but in terms of just fighting guys that are big, everyone's bigger than me. So I'm not trying to, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm fighting except for Micro Man. But other than that, I'm fighting I'm fighting everybody <laughs> to give me. But I'm also calling on everybody. Everyone was mad, quiet, twiddling the thumbs in the back when Judge put out an open challenge. I called him. I called as soon as he posted. I called it, and I was like, "That's me. Oh, that's my spot." And everyone was like, "They're not even. They even fighting for it." They're like, "All right, cool, go." After doing yeah. him, I dust myself off. I call off that too. You know what I mean? Like I don't. It's not stupid. People might confuse it with stupidity. I know what I'm doing. Oh, for sure. It definitely looks like you know what you're doing out there. We're not going to judge you for that. Bob Smokes, I'm going to swing it over to you. I know you've got a plethora of questions for Mr. Kwan here, too. So take the take the reins, brother. Yeah, yeah. First of all, extreme pleasure to have you on our podcast here. Thanks again for doing this. But I wanted to ask you a little bit about your obvious martial arts skill. Uh, where did that start? What styles are you proficient in? And uh, how have you uh, uh, incorporated that into your professional wrestling style? Right, so um, I won't, I only, when I was a kid, the only thing I wanted to be was a Power Ranger and a wrestler. That was it. Nice. So I figured I might as well learn how to fight. So I fell in love with combat, um, kickboxing. I got my uh, – so I started with kickboxing, and then I got um, got into Shaolin Kempo martial arts, and uh, I got my black belt um, in there from a pretty young age. Um, and then from there, I wanted, to, I wanted to fight and everything. This is, like, before, like, actually, like, MMA was, like, MMA. So I started to, like, pick up – other classes within my dojo, they would do your jujitsu classes, they would do uh, Muay Thai classes. So I would just try to pick up kind of everything that I was doing uh, that, they, you know, that I would be seeing. And, um, you know, talking, you know, five days a week for like, you know, 16 years, you know. Um, and then in school, you know, her, you know, with wrestling, I heard they had a wrestling team. I was like, oh, you know, it's definitely not the same as this, but this can't hurt. So I started amateur wrestling in, uh, in middle school, high school. Um, and, and and in terms of my my uh, my style in the ring, you can't make my move set in the game. I've tried; they're not there, and that's on purpose. 
I can't be mimicked. And that's the thing too. Like I did the karate, I did all that. And that was a somewhat of a detriment to myself a little bit because I didn't, before the world gets to you, right? You forget how you can be typecasted so easily and how you can be put into this box of anyone who looks like me gets put here. They get booked this way. They're this guy. I'm from New York. You can't talk to me like that. You can't. You mean like you can't. You know what I mean I'm not I respect to respect to everybody. Any any Asian American, any any Asian wrestler that is coming through these ropes and, and and paved the way for not just people who look like me, but just in wrestling in general, how much honor and respect that they command and they and you know through their work. But I'm the only. I'm one of the few. I can name maybe three others that are just not that way granted we look the part right and that's probably what got me in the door and yeah i got a black belt so that kind of fit helps fit the the role there but i'm me so you I mean all 360 kick your face i'll make it look pretty but i'll spit in it first <laughs> that's who i am so um that's why a lot of people especially my opponents in the ring they'll, they're gonna try to read me one way and they just get a whole different a whole different flavor that they're not used to because like i said I'm, I'm i'm smaller than a lot of them but as long as my hand can get to your face, I'm going to try. So. For sure. Bob, that's an, I was just going <laughs> to continue with that a little bit. I, I've, I've uh, seen some of your posts on Twitter where you uh, let us into a bit of how you do your workouts and such. And uh, a lot of wrestlers pump a lot of heavy iron and all that. But I noticed that your workouts are a bit different. You do a lot of body weight exercises, a lot of uh, pull-ups and, uh, and parallel bar work. Can you tell us a little bit more about your workout and, and uh, how it benefits your body and your style for wrestling? So, um, so thank you for noticing too, by the way. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, I do, I do put up weights, uh, you know, to, to, you know, I lift my weights. But if I'm not leg pressing what Hammerstone's doing, why am I got to show leg press? I don't got to do that. I show what I do. So like the, with the body weight stuff for me, that was for functionality and quality of life. Um, my father, um, ever since I was a kid, we were doing push-ups and, and pull-ups. That would be my punishment. I would do wall sits you know, holding a pull-up because it was more so, I mean, it was, it's, it's more mental than more than anything else. And you can lift, you know, there's a bunch of people that can't lift their body weight, but they can lift a bunch of weight on a bar and that's not strength. I mean, it's strength, but like you got to hold your, and then also metaphorically being able to stand on your own two feet, carry your own weight through thick and thin, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. So that mind over matter, that uh, time under tension, those types of exercises where it's you against you. It's not the weights. doesn't matter, you know, what, what you ate that day, it's, it's, it's you versus you, no matter what's going on. So if you beat you, you know, it's, so I like, I like that challenge. And that's why I work out that way. Awesome. Uh, bringing up other, uh, other things outside of professional wrestling. I was watching a recent uh, podcast that you were on as well, too, with a couple of gentlemen. Uh, just watched through that one. I think there was a mention that you're also a soccer fan. I might've even heard a Wayne Rooney reference in there when talking about the judges oh, footwork and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, elaborate, please. Cause I'm a massive soccer fan. I'd love to chat with that about that. Oh, man. We, it's it's going to be a brief chat. So <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, I played soccer in school just because like, you know, basketball was cool, but again, you know, then, then the size, like I was quick, but it was kind of like, you know, on the bench a little bit. And then, uh, you know, football, you know, too small, you know, wrestling was cool, but baseball, I would be falling asleep or I'd be in the parking lot or I would, you know, talk to the girls that were watching on the bleep. You know what I mean? Like I just, I needed my, my time filled. So soccer, although maybe watching it, sometimes people think it's boring. When you're playing, you're running for 90 minutes. Like you're running. Mm -hmm. So I always like being around that or, you know, 120, like I'm, I'm around there just running all the time that's how it kind of started my my interest in it and then you know as you as you become a you know you're with the teammates you're with you know the squad you're kind of learning you're seeing someone do a cool trick over there you know got people watching videos they wear jerseys at the school and you're so you're trying to understand like they get the video game so a lot of it was just kind of self-taught in terms of i want to research this guy because he does that move and that's cool or i'm going to watch and then obviously the world cup i would watch every you know all the time but of uh, as far as like actual fan 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 um, man, I just watch wrestling and basketball, man. So. That's that, that that's fair. Two great sports to be watching so, in the first place, too. Uh, going back sorry, to wrestling. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Hey, I thought I'd try. Um, so going back to wrestling for a minute here, too. Tonight on MLW Fusion, there was a middleweight championship matchup between TJP, Myron Reed, Myron Reed retaining the championship. Obviously, you're looking to gun for Reed. You want that championship belt. Um, outside of that, what about a matchup with TJP? Has that uh, ever been a desire of yours as well, too? Is that somebody you could see yourself inside that squared circle with? Oh, of course, man. 
I mean, everyone on that roster, I mean, they're, they're, I, I, I call them killers. You know what I mean? Obviously, you know, it's wrestling. You know, we try to be, you know, we're professional. People got families. But at the end of the day, like, when I say killers, I really mean, like, the ones who, um, the whole package. They, you know, they, they train. They work. They protect their brand. But they also maintain a family successfully. They also talk about future investments, self-investments, future investments. They got their head on a swivel because they're always looking for the next outlet, the next move. But they're also going right straight forward because they got their own goals in, in mind with you know with wrestling. I like to be around that. And very fortunately, I was around this, this, this type of locker room very early in my career. I've only been wrestling about three and a half, four years, and I've been injured for two of them. You know what I mean? So I went from, you know, people, you know, the people smoking cigarettes in the locker room to... I'm looking at these guys who, I mean, forget the action figures on the wall. Let's look at what, you know, what what kind of watch are they wearing and why and how'd they get that? They got that from wrestling because these guys are getting hot dogs over here. These guys are getting Rolexes. We got to talk. There's got, there's something you're, <laughs> that you're doing. So on a work level under like 1000%, he's one of the greatest to, to ever go in there. You know what I'm saying he's born for this, you know, but on the outside, I respect him a lot because, you know, he, he has a family, you know what I mean? He has, he has goals. He's, he's, you know, he's still young. You know what I mean? And he has so much knowledge because he's been around the best forever. So um, definitely, like, it would definitely be a tip in the cap to, to, to share the ring with him um, and, and learn. And some, and the best way to learn is literally just locking horns and seeing what's up. So 100% TJP's on the list. Certainly. Can't, can't wait for that to happen. Hopefully it does. Pop Smokes, I know you're itching to ask more questions. I'll get dirt back to you, my man. Well, to just talking about recent matches on MLW Fusion, we saw last week you had that nice one-on-one -on -one match with Ken Broadway. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm led to believe that Ken Broadway is one of your buddies and one of your friends in the wrestling business. How was that uh, experience to have a, a high-profile match against somebody that's close to you on, uh, on MLW TV? You know, it was uh, it was it was a lot it was a lot deeper than wrestling. You know, Ken, I know again, like I, I Ken, Ken's come from the same. He, you know, he's from the cloth. You know, just not just not just a, a New York guy, but someone who sees this business in such a different light, um, uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, and we talk a lot about how how our mindsets should not be ignored. How like where the where's the right time to embrace and really chase like an idea that we have when it's time to sit back and, and bring someone else up to speed so that they can understand where we're coming from. Cause we, you know, we think on a, you know, a thousand miles per hour. Um, you know, there was a wrestler, uh, from New York who, who passed away, Matt Travis, um, back in 2019, man. And, um, he was Ken's tag partner and best friend. Um, and through, you know, just through the, you know, the Northeast scene, we got very close. Um, and again, Matt Travis cut from that cloth, you know what I mean? Um, and we, and we, and we, we formed a bond without even really knowing each other, but we knew like, you know, real recognizes real and that's it. So we were able to vibe that way. And I remember when me and Gotch tagged against uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and Davey Boy um, in Gorilla, I was told that Matt Travis passed away. Um, and I just had to go out there and wrestle. It was crazy. And that, and that year was hard. That second year was hard. You know, it's still hard. Um, but, I remember him giving me so much encouragement when I got when I got signed and so much positivity and all that. And I said, you know, I told him, you know, when you're when you're here with me, you know, we're going to you know, we're, we're going to rock it down here. We're going to take over. New York is going to take over. So to be in that match with Ken and he got the big MBK, that was the that was the thing. Murder by kicks. MBK. They had, he has a tattooed on his ribs. Um, and for us to share that ring in that match on that stage through all of that. You know, it was one of those things where it was deeper than wrestling because every feeling, every emotion that I had was not from my life. It was from my journey through wrestling. That's what made it mean something. So it was cool. Full. It was amazing. Full circle to kind of be in the ring with him, having him get his first shot, have me have that first match with him, have me have my first singles match with him while he had that tattoo, while we brought it up, while we were coming back from New York together, like the first time we seen each other in a little bit. So it all just, it's funny how it works out, but it's a, it's a, it's definitely a blessing how um, how things come together. And speaking of tattoos for a moment there, uh, you have one, uh, I believe on your left arm with the numbers 21198 tattooed on the side of your arm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what is the significance behind the tattoo there? That's, uh, yeah, no, that's my, that's my sister's birthday, man. She was born, oh, nice. near, the she was born near the tiger. I was 17. I really wanted a tattoo and I needed a really good reason. <laughs> I was, I, I told my mom, I said, I'm getting, I'm getting my, I'm getting my sister's, uh, uh, 
spirit animal. You know, she's born year of the tiger too. Um, and then I got her birthday. So that was the first tattoo over there. Um, nice. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's always uh, nice stories to hear behind each and everybody's tattoos and everything like that. Uh, Papa Smokes, what else you got for us down there? Yeah, I was just thinking. Uh, don't want to go over stuff you've already answered many times on other podcasts, but uh, uh, I know that you were trained by Kono up in New York there, and uh, I was just thinking about uh, some of the other wrestlers we've uh, interviewed on this podcast. They, they talk about the relationships and the people that have been important to them throughout their wrestling career, and I wondered if you could touch on that, maybe give a couple shout-outs to those important people in your life and career that helped you along the way to where you've gotten now. Yeah, man. Um, you know, and, I, and obviously it starts with the trainer, right? Because he's the one that either, you know, he gets you in the door and, and, uh, and, and Kono definitely did that. When we started, I was his only student, uh, his first student too. So it was one of those, one of those things where we're going to learn, we're going to learn about all, about all this together. Um, he, he sensed potential in me kind of right away um and we like the same things it wasn't just about wrestling we talk about football we talk about clothes we talk about music like it was it wasn't it wasn't just yeah we were fans but we can put that to the side and not like mark out for two hours and then go home you know like we were we want when it was time to work it was time to work and then when there was little breakup periods to where we had to you know get to know each other it was uh it was always smooth it was always beneficial and we, and we got along really well he definitely uh filled a big uh like a big brother role for me um, you know, he taught me, he taught me everything I know. And, and, and you know, at, after every match, I call him up, let him know how it went. Anytime I have something, you know, it's going wrong or, or a question that I have, especially during my injury, you know, we would talk. Um, he's just always, he's always been there. He's always, he's just never like, you know, sometimes I think like, I, I'm always, him being proud is the first thing I think about because I'm a reflection of his, of his work and he loves this. You know, um, and yeah, I said, no, he's, he wasn't an MLW, but he kind of was because I'm a product of him. And anyone who ever asked me about anything about training or, or how I came up, his name is always going to be brought up because he is the first person. And I mean, like, and, and loyalty is so important to me. You, and then you, you trickle that down to the, you know, the group of guys that I, that I still that I keep in contact with every day that are always going to be there. You know, uh, uh, Dominic De Niro, who is, you know, a killer on the East Coast, and he's and he's and he's you know, he's he's grinding like his ass off. You know what I mean? Like you got uh, Desmond Cole too, uh, Percy Ryan, Sam Hain. Like these guys, like together, like we we we've been training. Like we're really in the, like from the mud together. Like our school got shut down. Like we were just like we were like trying to figure out what we were gonna do. Like together, like driving two hours to practice. You know, going up to driving to Jersey for CZW Dojo Wars, trying to just get a little bite and get some reps in because we didn't have training. You know, like. That type of stuff on weekdays, you go, you know, taking shifts in the car. Like everybody has their group who does this, but when you have that group and that 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 loyalty, you celebrate together, you lose together, you learn together. Anything that I learned in the MLW locker rooms or any locker rooms I've been blessed to get to on a higher level, I let everybody know like, this is what you should expect. This is what I learned. This is what I heard. Like this is, it's, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm not there trying to just name drop. Yo, guess who I was with? I got a cup of coffee with. You know what I mean, like, so, you know, we tell you tell fun stories, but. You know what I mean? What I want is for them to learn how to elevate and not skip steps, but skip up, but go around obstacles and know the right way to get around them. Whether that's politics, whether that's learning how to pack a bag, travel. You know what I'm saying? Like there's things like that they don't teach us in school. That's not no one's fault, but it's something that knowledge is only knowledge if you spread it. You know what I mean? Um, and then you have my partner, Gabe Sky, who, who you know what I mean? I take a bullet for him, you know what I mean? In, you know, in, in real life. Uh, he's someone who is the definition of just like, just uh, 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 you know, a, a brother, like for real. Um, like I'm about to get his car tattooed on my body because that car took us to so many shows. So you know what I'm saying? Like sleeping in it. You know what I mean? Through rain, like it's crazy. And like we can we cannot see each other because I live in Florida now. So we cannot see each other for weeks, months, and then go have a tag match and just be on and just and, and have match of the night. And I challenge anybody to say that we weren't anytime we tag. You know, um, and He's someone who I hope gets to be on that platform. I guess needs to be in front of a camera. He looks like a million bucks. He's a solid individual on top of that. And his skill set is just is just remarkable. It's crazy. So I mean I have, I'm very I'm very lucky to have people in my life in wrestling that uh 
that I hold near and dear to me and really help me kind of push along and, and really grind as, as hard as I can. Um, but I think also through just my personal life, I was able to be around the type of individuals that kind of mold you so that when you go venture off into your, into your career, into your, into your livelihood, into your hobbies, into your passions, that you're able to kind of scope out the snakes in the grass. You get to understand, you, mean, you, you know how to move. A lot of, I mean, a lot of people now, man, like, as you can see how, like, the internet and all this, like, people are really just trying to redo high school again, bro. Like, they do a couple curls, they put a little mascara on, and now they feel like they can just talk like this shit, but they don't know how to, they don't know how to do it. And now all this, now it's just, that's just a food fight. It's chaos. You know what I mean? And it's just, you know, we just sit back and just wait for it to be over, man, because we got too much work to do. There's too much money to make. Yeah. Glad, glad you said all that because uh, we 100% agree with you on all accounts of that. Uh, the online market can be very, very toxic these days. And it's unfortunate. It's uh, nice to see somebody that takes their craft very seriously. But uh, speaking of that craft, is there uh, plans for taking it internationally at all too? Uh, where have you traveled to and where are you looking forward to traveling to working? Um, I mean, the, the, so the book I'm very, I mean, and, and this isn't necessarily even the right way, but it's my way. I'm so selective. Of what I ch of who I choose to talk to, and where I choose to want to go, I've only had about I want to say fifty five matches in my life, and uh, I'd rather have fifty five good ones than two thousand okay ones, a hundred great ones. Like I'm not I I know we have a bump card. I know that everybody has just enough bumps in in, in their life, and it runs out. Um, with wrestling being on eight 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 days a week, you know what I mean, like. With, with with shows going on nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. I don't need to have four shows a week, four shows in a weekend for you to only remember one moment of one match after I kill myself for three. I, I You know you're only as good as your last one. And anytime put, someone puts a camera on me or I'm under those lights, you're only going to see You're only going to see great. So to me, I'm not into the crazy amount of reps. I'm into if it means something, if it, if it goes somewhere, if it, if it amounts to something. You know what I mean? Like obviously do it for the love, but – to a point because the love isn't gonna make my neck feel better you know what i mean like um yeah. that's just how i feel you know that's just how i feel about it um when we were at you know, mlw we went to we went to mexico and wrestled you know with the crash and that was definitely a really crazy experience i'd love to go up to canada i'd love to uh i'd love to go to europe i mean japan i would love to i would love to go everywhere man i mean wrestling is really a vessel to really take you everywhere and and definitely bring you outside your box and um I'm just looking forward for the next one, the next ride. Well, for sure. And we can uh, say it right now. If you ever do make your way up to Canada to let us know, because we are uh, part of the team behind Prairie Pro Wrestling out of Saskatchewan, Canada, and we would definitely love to have you on board. So if you're ever making your way up to Canada, let us know. We'll definitely get you on a card here and we'll make sure it's meaningful at the same time too. Yeah, man. I hope yeah, we'll talk after this. Cause I want to, I want to know, I want to know what's going on up there. I kind of want to figure out the scene. Sir, certainly we'll get to that right away uh pop of smokes do you have any last questions you'd like to ask here today no but not really but uh i just wanted to say it's so uh refreshing to find a guy with your sort of advanced mindset a, a young guy too that realizes in the business that it's not all about having the greatest match on every single card every single time it's about picking your shots and about uh making your matches count, making your spots in your matches count and, uh, and, uh, making sure that everything makes sense and, uh, doing stuff, uh, doing matches and doing spots that agree with booking that makes sense to uh, Bobby Munson. And I always talk about this on our podcast, but, uh, the, the business has changed a lot in the past years and a lot of young grapplers these days, it seems like will sacrifice anything to get themselves over no matter what it does to the card or to the business in general. And I can see that you have an understanding of that. And uh, it's very refreshing to see a young guy with a good attitude like that. It's, it's really great talking to you. No, man, I appreciate that a lot, man. It really, you know, and, and likewise, too. You know, I mean, you know, like I said, everything happened for a reason. You know, um, you know um, I'm definitely going to be um, – I definitely want to do this again. You know what I mean? Cause, yeah. Yeah. I, I plan to be around for a while. I plan to do really, really, really good things um, for for a plethora of reasons. But the number one thing is because this is all I wanted to do. So Awesome. That's fantastic news. Uh, before we uh, head off here uh, to end the broadcast, I just want to know if there's anything you'd like to plug, what you got coming up, your socials, anything like that. 
Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, April 16th, I'm in Wills Point, Texas for Smash Mouth Wrestling fighting uh, Nathan Bradley. I don't know much about him. They said he's the young gunner. It's as long as he has a heartbeat in the face, man, that's just not looking good. For him. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, April 23rd, Remarkable Wrestling ran by my trainer, Kono. I'm actually, I'm fighting Myron Reed in the, in the oh, semifinals. Nice. Nice. Champion. Um, if I make it to the finals, I'm going to be fighting Dave Sky. So, I don't know, I'm going to be fighting my brother. You know, they keep making me fight my friends. I don't like it. But uh, I won't be the first time. It probably won't be the last. Um, you know, in April 26th, we got Beyond Wrestling, uh, Rhode Island. Um, and April 30th, I got Urban Pro Wrestling in uh, Daytona, uh, Florida. Uh, new promotion. Um, I'm fighting for the title. And I think it's time I got some gold. You know, I'm tired of spending my own money on my jewelry. I might as well get, uh, <laughs> might, as well, <laughs> might as well win some. Um, but yeah, man, again, you know, the bookings are going to come. The shows are going to come. My name's going to get out there. You know, there's a, that, there's a million, a million wrestlers with a million social medias. So I'm just going to try to make my moments and make them count. And hopefully they share my stuff before they share their own. Well, we just got to say, we uh, wish you nothing but the absolute best moving forward in all those matches coming up and all the future endeavors as well, too. We're going to be singing your praises right here on this channel and everywhere that we get our chance to make our voices heard as well, too. So anybody tuning in right now, go check out the work of Akira Kwan. And again, uh, your social media, where can they find you? Uh, on Instagram, I'm at Tristan Tai, T-R-I-S-T-E-N underscore T-H-A-I underscore. And on Twitter, I'm at Akira Kwan. Um, and again, you guys are awesome. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm gratefully humbled that you guys think up about this because I watch your, I've been watching your show for the last few weeks. So it's been dope to kind of see how you guys review and, and give our locker room uh, the respect that it definitely has earned. And, um, and you guys obviously are just an extension of what we do. And the fact that you use your outlet to promote us, and again, and selfishly me, um, it means more than I can ever, you know, express to you guys. Uh, this means the world to us as well, too. So thank you very much for being on the show. We want to thank everybody who's tuning into this and checking out the replay on Twitch.tv. And also you can catch this on YouTube coming up as well, too. Follow with Kurt Kiro Kwan and check out all his matches. And once again, thank you for joining us here today. Everybody, have a wonderful day. Take care.